East Coast dominated production. Movies were made on rooftops of New York City, close to the theaters of Broadway. But in 1903, one film broke away from the painted trees and paper mache rocks of the theater and moved closer to the true motion picture style, the great train robbery. This Western, made in the wilds of New Jersey, produced by Edwin S. Porter for Edison, introduced a young actor, Gilbert M. Anderson. Later, in 1907, Jim Anderson formed the SNA Film Manufacturing Company in order to produce westerns with authentic backgrounds. Anderson finally settled in Niles, California. There, in a series of 10-minute films, he established the format of the classic movie western, and in them, Gilbert M. Anderson created the prototype of the western cowboy hero himself, playing the role of Bronco Billy. Then I conceived the idea what they wanted was a central figure. So I concocted the name of Bronco Billy. I made a series of Bronco Billy pictures. And they got over because they were centered on a, one character. And they really liked the character really more than they did the pictures. The scenes would come to our mind and we'd make them. I think I made several westerns from stories of Jack London and a fellow named Peter Kine. I, I made a picture for around four or five hundred dollars. That was that was a two reel picture. Eight hundred dollars was a whole lot to spend on a picture. The same picture that they would bring in a million would bring in fifteen thousand dollars then. Western pictures. <laughs> How can they improve on them for entertainment? You know, it's hard to believe, but Bronco Billy Anderson made over 500 Western movies right here in Nile, near San Francisco Bay, and only a few remain today. I'm Hal Angus. I was a member of Bronco Billy Anderson's s &A Motion Picture Company. GM, that's what we call Mr. Anderson, drew upon stock company actors, and we'd take the train to Nile to do scenes for the newfangled photo dramas. This was back when I was acting with the Liberty Theater in Oakland and with stock companies working around California. It's now more than a half a century. Niles has changed. The whole Bay Area has changed. I know I have. And this is where it all began. This old barn is the last and the only remaining piece of the old s &A Film Company. We did some film interiors inside of it. The outside scenes were taken up in Niles Canyon. GM bought in arc lights from the Orphan Theater but we did most interior scenes outside on the open platform. Today, this is the only original studio building of the s &A Company that is still standing. If this old barn could talk, it would have many, many fascinating stories. Here, Anderson forged the basis for the American Western movie. Any Western you have seen can be traced back to right here. Other producers tried to copy GM, but they didn't have any success because they didn't realize what the natural scenery and natural beauty of the country was. The Bronco Billy Anderson movies that were made here were the first to have the sweep and space of the Great West. And with Bronco Billy, Anderson created the Western movie cowboy character, the cowboy hero, rough and tough 
but human underneath. There was a story that became Anderson's first big success and was used in many movie western scenes. The Three Godfathers by Peter B. Kine. The theme of self-sacrifice became a motive and gave them warmth and human appeal. This was our temporary headquarters during 1912 while the studio was being built. From this hill, we can see the studio site where we worked until 1916. Back there was the main stage where we did our interior scenes. Around the corner was the business office. My wife, Josephine Rector, ran it. When she wasn't writing scenarios, she was leading lady in some of the pictures. And a funny thing, the same person who taking her position in the SNA studios in Chicago was Luella Parsons. When GM came here, Niles was all alfalfa fields and farms. So he built these cottages for his company, just back of the studio. The cottages aren't quite the same as they were. <laughs> Let's see. Ben Turpin and his wife lived here. And if I remember rightly, Wally Berry lived here. There's where Bronco Billy Anderson lived. Many a time I've seen him and his gang come out of that door. And most of the cowboys, extras, and <laughs> the extra girls lived at the hotel. Oh, and then there were others who give me credit for film work, such as Arthur Mackley, who always played the sheriff, Lee Willard, True Boardman, and many, many others. Then there were some of the juveniles. Margaret Clayton, for instance, the beautiful blonde gal, who later married uh, George M. Cohn, who was Mr. Broadway. And there was that dashing, curly-headed Fred Church. And then Evelyn Selby, a beautiful girl of the haunting eyes. <laughs> That's a long time ago. youth and pride and beauty. Of course, SNA made comedies too. We had Marie Dressler, Slim Somerville, Wally Berry, Ben Turpin, Chester Conklin. It was on such a road in Niles Canyon that Charlie Chaplin created his famous closing signature walk in the tramp. This area was ideally suited for our Wild West and outdoor settings. And believe me, Niles was a bit wild in those days. This was where we shot our exteriors for westerns, an ambush, an Indian encampment.
Banker Billy, who was a good director. He was a hard worker and worked us hard. At times, he would make two or three films in a day. I can't say I liked him. I admired him. He was a hard worker, and he had to fight for everything that he got. You know, we had a lot of real cowboys working with the company. They came in from Montana, Wyoming, Nevada, and from Rodeos. Sometimes they'd shoot things up, even when they weren't in the movie. It got so bad that the county sheriff had to come in and take their guns away. But they were really good guys. They lived for the moment. Yes, May Westerns, they were made for just folks, a nickels and dimes audience. We were just making entertainment for everyday people next door. You might wonder what Anderson and the rest of us thought about the movies we were making. We didn't think much of anything about them. We were just making a living, nothing more. Of course, we had some pride in our work, but we didn't look upon our work as making history. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> we will always think with great affection the code of the Western movie where a man is honored, not for what he has, for what prevails in his heart. It all happened right here, 60 years ago. It was Anderson who gave the Western depth and meaning. Salute to Gilbert M. Anderson, the man who first created the Western cowboy hero. Riding among these hills is Bronco Billy.